Where does the volume go? That is the question we're going to answer today in today's video. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Steve. Welcome bull runners. Welcome to the bull runners community. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day today. Today I'm on Dex tool and this is where you have a great overview where you see all these fancy tokens and uh, with this amazing volume, it's just incredible. And with volume, of course, also comes an increased gas price. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I just want to make a point in this video and just put the question out there. Where does the volume go? So in this video today, let's look at some facts on where the volume goes in all these projects. Now, before we get into the topic, let's set the stage. The stage here is this title couldn't have said it more. The recent crisis is the same mistake banks have been making for decades. And the mistake I'm talking about here is the lack of liquidity within the banks. It starts with a flaw within the system, which is the fractional reserve system within the banks. That means the banks only have to have a small percentage of the funds, roughly 10% is all they have to have and the rest are being invested in the form of long-term or short-term treasury bills with artificially low interest rates. Let's look at what the problem is. The current banking crisis stemmed from a classic asset liability mismatch that has played out miserably time and time again in history. How many times, how many decades are we going to learn this lesson of borrowing overnight and lending long? Whether it was in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and here we are, we're still doing the same mistake. Earlier this week, First Republic Bank became the third failure since March and the biggest bank collapse since the 2008 financial crisis. The bank suffered a deposit flight as its long-term assets fell in market value after a series of rate hikes, triggering worries about unrealized losses. We understand that for decades and decades, the system has been flawed and it's not sustainable. It's not something that works well. So you would think that now that we are at a new revolutionary stage of the blockchain, the digital currency era, we would have to do things differently. But here we are again, we're still using the same systems that have been causing all this banking crisis that we are in today. And we still repeat the same thing, but we're just doing it now on the blockchain. So this is the whole idea that I wanted to point out here. This is volume coming in. Basically, these are deposits coming in. So as these deposits are coming in, ask yourself, where does your deposit go to? Now, for the sake of argument, let's just pick the most hype. The meme token that gets the most attention right now is Pepe. And let's look at the volume of Pepe, for example. The volume within the 24 hours is 44 million right now. These are deposits compared to like a bank like the banks. So with these deposits, first of all, when you purchase Pepe, it has a zero tax, right? So you go, oh, okay, zero tax. That's good. I don't have to worry about taxes. But what you don't realize is that these are MEV bots. They do front running and a sandwich attack. An anonymous MEV bot operator has cashed in well over 1 million this week by executing sandwich attacks against buyers and sellers of two meme coins. Now, that was at the beginning. This article is, uh, is about two weeks old. So obviously he was making that million between two coins, but now there's like a dozen of them out there. The wallet address linked to the Ethereum name service domain, Jared from Subway, made 950000 from the sandwich attacks on April 18th and profited about $300,000 and $400,000 on April 17th and 19th, respectively, according to an April 19th tweet on non-fungible token data platform C Launch. So, like he says, a large portion of the profits came from attacks on trading activity relating to two meme coins, which was Pepe and Voyak. This was when there were only two of them and he already made 950 in one day. Now there's like a dozen of them that he's feasting on. So he's making way more than that now. Now, for those who don't know what a sandwich attack is, a sandwich attack occurs when an attacker sandwiches a victim's transaction between their own two transactions in order to manipulate the price and profit from the user. This is possible because the victim's transactions is first sent to the mempool where it waits to be added to the next block. In the meantime, the attacker sets one transaction with a high gas fee to ensure it is accepted first and another transaction with a lower gas fee to ensure it's accepted after the victim's transactions. The attacker profits 
it's by buying the victim's token at a price cheaper than the market value, then sells it within the same block, taking in the difference between the revenue from the transaction minus the gas fees. So according to MEV Blocker, MEV bots have extracted more than 1.38 billion US dollars from Ethereum users attempting to trade, provide liquidity, and mint NFTs. And this is the key right here, provide liquidity. This is the whole message in this video, is that all those projects that are claiming zero tax, this is one point, close to 1.4 billion US dollars have been taken. There are meme coins with zero taxes, with high volume, best field for all these MEV bots that are draining liquidity out of these projects. And it's a shame to just watch and see how individuals are freely giving out liquidity away and having it drained away from their projects. And you see here, several MEV block projects have been launched in recent months to help protect Ethereum users from sandwich attacks. And one way to protect your users, your holders, your community from such sandwich attacks is by implementing taxes because they can't, these bots will not be able to jump on it for one. Uh, two, you create a platform that is sustainable, that retains liquidity, that is deflationary by burning tokens and removing them from total supply. We cannot justify being reckless and creating platforms that have the same fundamental issues as the ones that we are facing right now and has been causing all this inflation and all this financial and banking crisis as we speak. We have to be accountable and we have to be better than that. Let's do better than that community. As a, and I speak this as a crypto enthusiast to just highlight and educate the community on what's going on and how they can protect themselves uh, in situations such as these. Now, the whole point is there's nothing wrong with this if this would be going back to the community. It is going back to the community, right? Unfortunately not. And this is exactly the point. This Subway themed Jerry from Subway, like I just showed you, it's another MEV bot that is racking up millions and by front running you, sandwiching your transactions and putting you in a hole once you enter a position and actually taking advantage of the communities. It All these fees are not going back to the community. It goes back to this group of individuals or this individual and they are the ones actually retaining all these funds. So you might fall for, oh, it's a zero tax we don't have to worry about uh, paying any taxes, but you actually worse off. So this is how they're having a field day. You as an investor, you think that you're entering a project that has zero taxes. This would be yours, your fees that you would have been having. Whereas that million a day would have actually gone into the hands of the community. Let's make an example right now. If this would be going back to the community as liquidity, 1%, that would be 430. 30,000 right back into the liquidity and this on a daily basis just one percent the issue is liquidity here and how can we keep doing the same mistakes we did for decades the lack of liquidity and we're not focusing on retaining liquidity so that once individuals are ready to exit their positions there's a system in place within the platform that retains it that accumulates it that facilitates that for them, but none of these are doing that. As a matter of fact, there is a lot of liquidity being taken out in the form of these sandwich bots. And this is liquidity that is being taken from your project that you're investing in. This would have been liquidity going right into the project, into your pockets, but now it's being taken away from your project. And this is just to show you that there is this notion that the projects with zero taxes are more appealing than those with taxes. But you don't understand that this zero tax projects, all of them, you can look at all of them with this highest volumes. They all have this bot attacks that are draining liquidity out of your project and you're missing out because they front run you with sandwich attacks Look at the liquidity to market cap ratio. Let's calculate that. You see how the liquidity right now is at 7 million. Let's just keep it even. Let's say 7 million. If you calculate the liquidity that is in here and divide it by the market cap, market cap right now sits at 436.7. Let's call it 436 million. Now, that is less than 1.6% 
liquidity to market cap ratio. That is pathetic. This is the exact same situation we are in right now that is going on with the banks right now. In the banking system, it's called fractional reserves. And now we're bringing that same flaw system into crypto. In order to change this, you have to capture this volume. To put it in perspective, you have close to 43 million in deposits within one day, within 24 hours, but there's only 7 million for withdrawal. So I understand that you get the picture. This is not sustainable. This is not something that in the long run will be sustainable because decades upon decades upon decades, we've been through this with the banking system. And now in the new era digital system, where you would think we've learned from the traditional finance and we are experiencing the banking crisis that is going right now, we would learn and create a platform that is sustainable, that retains liquidity and that is deflationary that solves the problem that we are facing currently and that is breaking, literally breaking the entire financial system. You would imagine that there is a platform that actually is solving this issue and trying to build a platform that is actually retaining liquidity. It's sustainable so that it has an ever increasing liquidity to market cap ratio so that whenever people are ready to exit, there would be a much, much closer relation between the market cap of the project and its total liquidity. These two numbers are key within a project and it's always very important to see how high, the higher this number, the ratio is, the healthier the liquidity. If we do the same with bull run, bull run is an ecosystem that's main purpose is to solve the liquidity issue. And if we come here and just look at this ratio, there is 295,000 in liquidity and the market cap right now is 711. That is 41.5% liquidity to market cap ratio. That is a high liquidity to market cap ratio that shows you how healthy the liquidity is. The closer these two numbers are with each other, the healthier the project is. And this is the concern community that we're facing. And this is for the crypto space. We can't be repeating the same issues that we've been having for centuries and bring it over now onto the blockchain because it won't solve anything. We have to be smarter than this. We have to learn from the situation we've been through and understand that it is important to have taxes, especially if these taxes go towards retaining liquidity, which we have. 4% goes towards retaining liquidity for your exit liquidity. It goes towards burning the token, which we only started with a million token in total supply. And right now, as you see, BRL is extremely deflationary. We are now down to 979,225 from 1 million. So this token keeps decreasing and this tax goes towards decreasing the token amount. It removes the tokens from Uniswap and completely takes them out from the total supply. 4% on the buy side and 5 on the sell go towards retaining liquidity and that gives it that good healthy liquidity to market cap ratio. Also, based on the volume, 2% on the buy side and 3% on the sell side go towards those who decide to use the dual staking platform that we have in the form of USDC distributions. So as the volume that is generated goes back to the platform to create stability and goes back to the community in the form of USDC distributions. So this is the reason why it's important to have a platform that is sustainable, that it will be here for the next 10, 20, 50 years because it retains liquidity, it is deflationary, it removes token from the total supply, and especially it gives back to the community. So the volume goes back to the community and goes, back, goes towards building a sustainable platform. And it's not going into the hands of anonymous MEV bot operators that are draining your project with a million dollars a day. So these are the reasons why I'm saying we have to be very careful. And I just wanted to educate the crypto space, the crypto community, and just point out and put that question out there because it's an elephant in the room. I don't understand how you can have 42 million in volume, but only 7 million in liquidity. It doesn't add up because right now, this is the issue that we're facing in the, in the crypto space right now. That's why banks are just collapsing left and right, major banks, because 
fractional reserves because the system is flawed. It doesn't retain liquidity. It's not built to gather liquidity. And that's why it's not sustainable. That's why once a bank run starts, it will collapse immediately. If your project doesn't have an ecosystem that works towards retaining liquidity, Binding tokens to remain deflationary and gives back to the community, rewarding them through the high volume that the platform is generating. I don't see how sustainable this system is going to be. And we're just bringing the same system that has put us in a very bad situation and that has caused this financial crisis and inflation. And we're putting it now on the blockchain. So I just want to give you a wake up call. I'm not bashing any projects. It's amazing to see how great a community can rally together. It's incredible how within such a short period, it's been only since the 14th, so barely a little bit over two weeks, and this project has already amassed close to 80,000 holders. And this has no use case, utilities, fancy roadmaps, zero. It is strictly community driven. And this is the beauty of it. This just shows you how when a community rallies behind something, behind a vision, behind a revolution, it can achieve whatever it wants to achieve. My only point I'm trying to make here is that imagine if this platform had an ecosystem that makes it sustainable. So all this volume being drained out of the system and handed to anonymous individual, imagine having this and recycling it within the community, spreading it among the community and feeding into this liquidity to make the platform sustainable. That's the whole message here. I'm not bashing on any project. Actually, I'm amazed on how a community can rally behind a project and make such an impact. During this bear market, we're experiencing basically a bull run. This token is barely two weeks old and it has close to half a billion in market cap has a volume of over 42 million and close to 80,000 holders. This is impressive. This is what crypto was supposed to be. This is what community is all about. This is a picture perfect example of what it looks like if you have a community that rallies behind a vision. My only point that I'm pointing out here is that we should have more responsibility in creating ecosystem platforms that retain liquidity out of all these deposits. It should reflect liquidity just as much. And it should be a deflationary platform that retains liquidity and that especially gives back to the community and not just to an individual MEV bot operator that racks in close to a million dollars a day and drains these projects out of their liquidity instead of going back to the community. So this is the message for today. I just wanted to point this out and just highlight how we can't be repeating the same mistakes that we've been already experiencing in the traditional financial market. Let's be smart. Let's build a platform that is sustainable, that retains liquidity, that is deflationary, and that protects the holders, and that gives back to the community. It's mind boggling how so much deposits, so much volume are coming in and how high the market cap is, but less than 2%, 1.6% liquidity to market cap ratio. This is not sustainable community. This is not sustainable over time. And this is just a continuation of the existing problems that we are already facing right now that for decades has been chipping in on demolishing this whole financial and monetary system. So this is the message for today. I hope this was informational to you. I wish everybody a wonderful rest of the day. And as always, let's keep in touch.